Good afternoon, my name is Paul Titley and I'm welcoming you to Marketing 2. Today we're going to talk about price, and price is an important aspect of marketing. It's one of the four P's first of all, but fundamentally price is the thing that gives us as consumers value for the products and services that we buy. So it's important from our perspective of marketing students to look at price and say, how do we arrive at that price? How does one determine how much something is worth? number one. And number two is from a seller's point of view, how do we determine what range of prices we can charge for things? So what would consumers be willing to pay at the lowest end? What would consumers be willing to pay at the, the highest end? So that's a couple of the things that we're going to look at in this unit. First of all, this unit talks about price in terms of determining the cost and uh, there's examples given for example of the Prince Edward Island Bridge and I would use the example of the ferry between Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. How does one arrive, arrive at a price to charge for traveling on the ferry? First and foremost I think most of us would automatically think well what does a cost actually provide the service? And, and realistically cost tends to put the bottom amount on price. That is, if the item costs a dollar or ten dollars or a hundred dollars to produce or provide, then the price should reflect at least that cost. Otherwise, the business will not be existing for very long. So, for example, if it costs a hundred dollars to bring me from Nova Scotia to Newfoundland, then that certainly should be the price that is charged. Now, if However, there are other factors that need to be considered besides the raw cost, then that would also factor into the price. So let's think, for example, of the ferry system. How much do the actual boats cost? Who pays for them? If, if we as consumers, and the ferry system is subsidized, we recognize that, but assuming that it's not, if we can, as consumers want to ride on the ferry, the ferry company has to recoup the cost of building and operating the ferries. So those costs would have to be built into play. Also the cost of the staff, the, the services, all the ancillary things that go along with providing the ferry boat service, all of those things would have to be considered in order to calculate the cost. Also, if, there's, if I'm the only one traveling on the boat, will that affect the cost? Because what if there's a million people traveling on the boat? Did that affect the cost? And, and, and does it affect the price as well? Should I have to pay a different amount if I'm the only one traveling? Or if there's a million people traveling, should that affect the price? And, and generally, the answer to that is yes, there is a difference because the number of users, you can spread the fixed cost of operating a piece of equipment or uh, in this case a ferry. Those costs can be spread over a greater number of people. So the demand or the amount of people who are willing to buy that product is going to have an impact upon what the minimum and the maximum costs are that you can charge. So those are important considerations when we, when we think about cost. Now in this unit, one of the things that we want to look at is what exactly is the price. And formally, we define price as the money or other considerations such as trade that is given in exchange for a good or a service. So that's the basic definition of price. When we also look at price, though, from the lens of value, and that is, how much is something worth to us? So say, for example, I might appreciate uh, uh, pizza. I might really like pizza. I might be a, a lover of pizza, and I might be willing to pay more for it than you who can take it or leave it. You might prefer wine, or you might prefer hamburgers, or something like that. So <clears throat> the question is, how much are you willing to pay for something you don't necessarily like? How much are you willing to pay for something that you would like a lot? So these concepts of price are tied in with the concept of value, and that is you define the value because you're the one who determines how much you value it or like it. So if I value something, I will tend to be willing to pay a higher price for it. Or I will, will get more benefit out of it for the price that I charge. So, so value is a consideration of price and the amount of value or benefit that I get out of it. So it's an important, that is an important factoring when we look at price. When we look at the price for something, it tends to be made up of a number of factors. First of all, 
price tends to be what we see on the sticker on the item. So if it's selling for a dollar, for example, that's what's written on the container, one dollar. But we know when we're bringing it up to the grocery counter or the counter in the store that it will cost us a dollar plus tax. So it's actually costing us, in, in our case right now, a dollar thirteen. Okay, well, are there any other factors that could adjust that price? Yeah, sometimes it's on sale. So the, if it was a dollar, let's say it's for 20% off. So that price would then go down to 80 cents. And on the 80 cents, then we would add the tax. So price is affected by things that go on, such as taxes, and things that come off, such as allowances or discounts. So we have to consider those factors whenever we arrive at the actual amount that we pay. We also have to factor in our basic understanding of accounting here. And our basic understanding of business and accounting says that price times the quantity, how much we sell it for times how many we sell, will give us our total revenue, which is the total amount of income that we have come in. Revenue then has expenses subtracted from it to give us profit. That's how much we have left over after we've paid all our expenses. So it's important to understand those concepts. The key issue that's looked at in this section, though, is not necessarily from our perspective as customers, but from the perspective of a business. How does a business figure out what price it will put on a product? And what are some of the considerations that a business has when it does that? We're looking at a step process here, and it's really a six-step process where business says, okay, first of all, what are our pricing constraints? What are the things that limit us in terms of what the minimum price we can charge is and the maximum price we can charge is? These could be anything like the cost of providing the product would be a minimizer. Um, how much people would be willing to pay could be a maximizer. So that would give us a range of the lowest possible we could charge and the highest possible we could charge. Within that, then we look at our objectives and say, what do we want to do? Do we want to be, you know, good company and sell lots of product and make sure people have it? In that case, we our, our objectives would tend to focus on keeping the price low. Whereas our other objective might be to maximize profits and to get as much value and return out of this as possible. In this case, we might want to drive up on the higher end of the possible pricing spectrum. So our constraints box us in, and our objectives kind of indicate which end of that spectrum of prices that we're going to look at. That's the first step. The second step that we look at is considering the demand for that product. What is the demand? And if demand is low, that means that demand times the price, so a low demand times any price, will be a relatively low amount of revenue. If demand is high, demand times the price will give us a relatively high amount of revenue. So again, the demand factors into our total revenue, how much revenue we can possibly make. We need to be able to estimate our revenue and decide whether or not this is worth pursuing by looking at the demand for the product. And there's a number of ways that we can assess demand. Normally, market research would do that. The third step is to figure out the cost, volume, profit relationship. Now, that's a fancy way of saying is, if we produce a lot of product, what's it going to cost us to produce that a lot of product? We're going to need bigger factories, more people, uh, incur higher expenses, getting product shipped into these sorts of things. That's going to have an effect on how much profitability it has. So the cost, volume, profit relationship is important to look at whenever we consider what type of price to put on this. So anything that has a high volume, for example, and relatively low cost, we might want to charge a lower price for it there because we rely on making money on high volume. Other things might cost a lot of money to provide. We can't produce a lot of them, but we still want to make a half decent profit, so we have to charge a lot for it. The fourth set step is to set an approximate price level. So effectively, uh, that spectrum I talked about, we have to kind of use all those previous considerations to figure out where we're going to fit in that spectrum, higher end or lower end. Once we decide generally we want to sit in one of those ends, then we kind of make some final tweaks to it. And that's really the fifth price, uh, the fifth and sixth steps is to say, well, let's set a list price. Here's what we say we're going to charge for. And then in the sixth step, we're going to make some adjustments, uh, quantity discounts, seasonal discounts, trade-ins, 
All of those things could affect what we actually sell the product for, and we have to be aware of those. And you'll be looking at those very closely in this unit. So overall then, in summary, the unit is about pricing, and it looks at the two perspectives on pricing. You as a consumer, how you, how you value something in terms of the price, and the entity, the organization who wants to sell things, and how it can go about setting those prices. Make sure you're aware of both of those aspects, because those are the key things that will be tested. Thank you.